Hey, so one big discussion with aging is with the topic of stem cells. So stem cells are pluripotent cells. Um, there, I mean, there's two types of cells. There's the pluripotent stem cells, and there are the specific stem cells. So. Pluripotent, and there's multipotent and specific stem cells. So, um, well, pluripotent stem cells can obviously become a hectum of other cells. Uh, embry embryonic stem cells are pluripotent stem cells, and they become can become any cell in the body. Um, the multipotent cells are more specific stem cells. They're like muscle stem cells or, or neural stem cells. They, be, they can become multiple different types of stem cells, but still is still restricted. And then there's more specific stem cells than that, which I would just call specific stem cells. That one becomes one type of cell. So the scientists have been doing research on how that can be used to... Um, not only fix disease, but also slow the progression of aging or maybe even reverse aging. So uh, stem cells are used to repair everything in the body, anything that can be repaired. Uh, I mean, an exception with those long-lived proteins. Um, long-lived proteins. And I'm sure a few other things that cannot be replaced. For those, we'll probably have to use... We'll, that will probably have because there's probably not any specific stem cell associated with it or it's not triggers so for that we'll have to create some sort of treatment which Aubrey de Grey is doing right now that would force it to divide um, so so another thing that is a big major topic is embryonic stem cell research so a lot of people are against this so scientists have been looking for a different way of attaining plural potency and that is using cell programming of non-pluripotent cells. Cell programming. And they've, they've, they've actually succeeded in many types of cells. But the, difference, the, the difficulty of this is that there are a heck ton of types of markers that can be on the epigenome of cells. Uh, I'll explain that the epigenome of cells is um, what causes gene expression. It's what causes um, a cell, every cell has to have the same genome. But what differs between the different cells is that different parts of the genome are activated. So um, stem cells would have this sort of marks and codes that it says this is stem cell. And then a blood cell or, or hematopoietic cell would say these are the markers that determine me to be a blood cell. So let's pretend, um, let me get my, right, so this pretend is the entire genome of a cell. Uh, pretend those are equally long lines, smudges that look exactly the same, or pretend that's the same. So along this part right here, pretend this codes for the expression of muscle cell. And then you have a different cell that expresses this part right here. And I guess I'll put them in circles to make it look more realistic. There. Now it looks partially like a cell. So now you got this part that looks like a a blood cell, and this one that activates like a like a um, muscle cell. So they've been able to do that actually using retroviruses, and retroviruses are uh, just viruses that is able to copy DNA from RNA and then inject it into the cell membrane where it travels to the to, to the nucleus uh, where it combines its uh, DNA with the you know with the body's genome and then so yeah, they've, they've been able to do that, and of course, as I said before, that's that is a really important topic. That the two different cells differ only in its epigenetic expression. So epigenetic expression. 
spells differ only in epigenetic expression. And just to be sure, just to make sure. If I were to zoom out, let's say this circle represents a zoom. And you have these histones. I'll just draw them as circles. And around these histones are DNA. Alright, pretend this these smudges around the hist histones are DNA. And also depending on how these histones um contain certain markers that determines which DNA is going to be activated and which or which genes are going to be activated and which genes are going to be um, repressed. So one good marker to determine that would be the I'll type it here. It is the H3K4ME3. H3K4ME3 marker. And this is this stands for the trimethylated histone 3 lysine 4. And when you find a lot of that, or if you find some of that at the promoter region, that's where um, DNA replication starts. If you find a lot of that at the promoter region of the replication, then that also that means that it's going to be a tri transcribed re region. It means it's going to be copied and then converted into a protein. But if you find too much of this marker, that means it's going to be repressed, which means it's not going to be transcribed. So stem cells can be copied into many different forms. Stem cells doesn't need to be autom just doesn't need to be specific in one step. It can take multiple steps and it has different pathways to do so. It can go from stem cell to stem cell and then it could go from stem cell to um it could replicate it to two specific cells or it could go from stem cell to one stem cell and one specific cell so just to um, draw this out. I'm going to use right. This is a stem cell. Um, I'm going to use three pathways, actually three different types of poss possibilities. Stem cell here, and then that could become one stem cell and one cell that's oops and one cell that's different, or it could become one stem cell and another stem cell, or it could become both specific cells. So let's say the specific cell is muscle cell. You could get one stem cell here, and then you get another muscle cell uh, when it replicates, and then you could get, or when it divides, and you get two stem cells, or you could get two muscle cells. So there's different pathways to how stem cells work itself. So in the next video, I think I'll talk about uh, the stem cell niche which is the housing for the stem cells and it's also a topic that is widely studied in uh, aging. Right.